Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of the Hudson Valley Squares. And tonight, a little bit different programming for this episode here today. We just found out just a couple short hours ago that Steve Grimmett, legendary vocalist of Grim Reaper, uh, passed away today at the age of 62, born August 19th, 1959 in Swindon, England. Uh, he leaves us on the 15th of August, 2022. So uh, sad loss for the metal community, right, fellas? Steve Keeler and uh, Chris Allo in the house as well today. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. for having him. Yeah. And Steve, yeah. you said you had, you've had you been conversing with him quite a bit like over the last uh, couple months and years. Well, right? not even in the last couple months, but uh, during the pandemic, when my channel you know, kind of took off and we had our all-star cast when we were doing the Rock Fantasy Files, and if anybody watching would like to look back, please do. Uh, we interviewed Steve Grimmett. Uh, and I got my notes here, so let me do this professionally like. And uh, yeah, I've had him, on, I had him on the Rock Fantasy Files a couple times. Uh, once it was with, uh, when we first talked to him was in 2021. And we had uh, John McAtee, of course, was one of my regulars. Uh, now he's on tour. He's out with Goat Horror right now. I think he's in Boise, Idaho tonight, actually. I was going to reach out to him. But I'm sure he was too busy to join us. And uh, from heavy metal home TV television, I had G Germany's Denise Donner was also and the four of us were just sitting and chatting with Steve. He was such an excellent interview, as Chris is probably going to talk about later. He was just such an, a, a, you know, a, a great soul to talk to and plenty of stories and just so friendly and Later on that year, we did another episode. It was of the new wave of British heavy metal. And I think uh, we actually tried to get you on that one, Pete. We had a bunch of greats on that one. We had Brian Tatler from Diamond Head and Tony Dolan from Venom Inc., John Gallagher from Raven, of course, Steve from Grim Reaper. We were all, all on that chatting along with John McAtee and Denny Barth and some of the regulars. I think Steve Levin was actually on too. And it was just a shock for me to hear about it. And, you know, over, over the years, even before that, he would reach out to me once in a while and ask me how the store was and stuff like that. And, you know, I hadn't really known him personally over the years, but I, for some reason, I reached out to him for something years ago and I did get to go see him. And I, my memory's so hazy, especially now because I'm sleeping all the time, getting over the uh, knock of wood and going through this uh, Corona mess again. But, uh, Anyhow, but uh, it just seems like I had to reach out to Chris and ask him about the gig that we saw Grim Reaper at, and it was the Hell on Wheels tour. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 go ahead. I that believe was in September of 1987 at yeah, the Midhouse yeah. Civic Center was Grim Reaper, Armored yeah. Saint, and Halloween. Yeah, great which show. It was a fantastic show at the Civic Center. And after you mentioned that, when I watched my interview, I was watching it with my wife a little while ago, and he was talking in depth about that tour. And that was one of their big tours in the States, of course. Yeah. yeah and, uh, you know, he was, were, I'm sure they were hoping that that was going to be the tour that would break them really big here. Yeah. And that's, that's as close as they came, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then Beavis and Butthead made them quite famous. Yeah. Well, fuck Beavis and Butthead. I, I say it all the time. Fuck those guys. I don't like them in the but... ass. They made fun of Grim Reaper and yeah. At the Gates and Carcass and fucking Cannibal Corpse and Iron Maiden and a million other awesome bands. So fuck Beavis and Butthead. There we go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully Steve got some album sales out of that. But th that's a whole nother issue. Yeah, it's a whole you know, Steve had a lot of problems with that. And of course, a lot of people knew Nick Bocott from Grim Reaper days back in the day, too. He worked in the recording. And, uh, I think he worked with the Epic or CBS for a while. Yeah, and he was at one of the guitar magazines. Uh, oh, for I many remember, years. Yeah, for, yeah many. for many years. I remember Frank White and I hanging out with Nick Bocott a few times because he mm. was he was somewhat local uh, on the East Coast. And uh, yeah, I interviewed uh, Steve Grimmett uh, in 2019 when uh, 2019 or 2020, right before the pandemic. Okay. Uh, I had seen him at the chance when when Steve did, uh, which was for um, his At the Gates record. But I believe the show was before the album was released, so I interviewed him mm. after the show. But he was just a great guy, like Steve said. He had great stories. I mean, me personally, um, I found him his story uh, to be just completely inspirational. Uh, I, I interviewed both him and Jeff Becerra from Possessed. Uh, around around the same time, and I'm like, wow, these are two, you know, metal vocalists 
who were, you know, upright or how, whatever the proper term is. And then, you know, Steve Grimmett lost a leg mm-hmm. and, you know, Jeff Becerra was paralyzed, but they, they both made comebacks and both returned to the stage and tour, toured the world. And I was like, sure. that's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know if I had that intestinal fortitude to, to coin a wrestling term to do that. You know, to overcome that depression and be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to, you know, Steve Grimmett was was out there hopping around on one leg. But, man, he still looked great. He sounded mm. great. Belted out those songs. I mean, I found it truly inspirational. And and like I said, the last, Gr- you know, Grim Reaper record he did at the gates, I thought was really good, really strong. Yep. Rich Catino, what's going on? Yeah, you didn't miss much, Rich. We're just kind of giving some thoughts about uh, Steve Grimmett and Grim Reaper and, you know, the sad cool. news. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought that because that's uh, – I didn't oh, – I didn't have yeah. some, some time to go through the, the, the vaults and grab my Grim Reaper vinyl. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And we uh, did a ranking, me and uh, Chris, a couple yeah, years ago, right? That's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. I love yeah, that. After, the, after the last record came out. Yep. Yes, yes. So I still got my three original vinyls here. And, yeah, I mean, uh, I, one of the things I always liked about Steve is I, he had a very unique vocal style. Yeah. Didn't sound like anybody else. Right? Oh, yeah. I don't think anybody could sound like him. Very, very unique. And I remember the first time I heard See You in Hell, uh, which, you know, now that we all these years later, you know, some people may still feel it's their classic album I, I think kind of usurped a little bit by some of the ones that came after it but I remember the first time I heard this I was like wow that's a really different sounding band right uh it's, it's classic metal but that that voice yeah the voice very very unique very unique and, and he had they didn't voice. sound like everybody else from uh, the new wave of British heavy metal right yeah right. no doubt yeah and it's going to Go ahead. I'm sorry. Chris. I was going to say, besides Grim Reaper, he did that one killer record with Onslaught. Oh, Steve yeah. Kennedy, glad you mentioned that. Which I thought was was fucking great. Search Terrible for cover, Sanity. but a great album. Is that Search for Sanity, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. I think that was 1989. What was that other band he was in? Wasn't it? Was it Lionheart? Lionheart. Oh, yes. They were like a melodic, yes. yeah. melodic hard rock band that had a few good albums, too. I think they did maybe three or four. And, 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 uh, I know I mentioned to Steve um, because I confirmed it with Steve Grimmett when I spoke to him uh, that, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but Steve Grimmett was technically or almost in Black Sabbath. Yes. Uh, Tony Iommi had decided to part ways with Tony Martin and he was just going to continue on with a new version of Sabbath and he tried out a bunch of singers and Steve Grimmett told me that he got the gig. Yes. And it was in 1997 and they were they were going to uh, start to do a new record. And then Steve Grimmett told me he heard on the news or on the radio that Ozzy had re- Ozzy and Geezer had rejoined Black Sabbath. And he's like, well, there goes my gig in Sabbath. Yeah. And, and that was it. But he, he apparently, you know, tried out and got the gig with, with Tony Iommi. When I interviewed him on, my, on the Rock Fantasy Files, Chris, that was a question that you had yeah. given me. And he, just, he, he discussed that uh, yeah. after, uh, on, on our interview, too. And then there was a funny little story, which I, I don't think it was on my interview, but we were talking as Robin Mays and I think did some merchandise with, with him at the 70,000 tons. Okay. And they were talking about doing a shirt that something to do with like, you know, I'm how you had talked about how he lost his leg and was still out performing. Sometimes he'd be in a wheelchair when he got yeah. tired, but he'd be standing up with a cane. And uh, we were talking about still standing and I was joking with him. And going, you know, as he was doing this cover, like, uh, what do you want to call it? The pandemic series or whatever, lockdown series, where he was doing a lot of covers, like he did a Heaven and Hell. I just watched a Holy Diver. And he had Nick Bocott back on some of those. And we were joking. I said to him, I said, well, maybe you should cover the Elton John class, right. you know, classic. And he, he laughed. He goes, I'm going to get a hold of my guys. And see if we could do an Elton that Elton song. I would love to do it, but I don't think it ever materialized. I kind of like searched for it briefly before I came on tonight, and I didn't see it. But uh, but Robin Mason had that idea of him doing like a T-shirt of him like standing up and like you know I'm still standing or, or something awesome. to that. Maybe not exactly that thing, but and I said, well, I like the Elton yeah. John song, you know. 
he seemed to have a really good sense of humor. Oh, he sure did. Uh, which, you know, not not every, you know, you can't say that about a lot of people, uh, you know, at, at his level in the me- metal community, uh, especially a guy that went through a, you know, a, a terrible uh, hardship and, uh, of course, came back from it, mm. which is, to me, just amazing. Uh, it blows my mind. When the only did problem- you guys see them when they were, I don't know if, if you talked about this already, did you see them when they came around and did the tour? Yeah. A few years ago, before the pandemic, I saw him at the chance, and he was great. What year I, I, was that? Because I saw him in New Jersey, but I forgot the year it was. You know, it's it was either the end of twenty nineteen somewhere around there. I yeah, I think it was the end of twenty nineteen. Because if I'm not mistaken, I, right. like I was, I was saying that before. I it was supposed to the tour was supposed to be for the At the Gates record, but I think the way it was booked, the tour happened right before the album came out. And the album mm-hmm. definitely came out in 2019. Um, so at, at, okay. at, at, at end of 2019, early 2020, right before the pandemic, right? Yeah. I think it's 2019. I think it was before that. I think it might have been the fall then, I think. Yeah. Because that's yeah, what I, I think I saw him in Jersey at Debonair. Right. Was that that, the, that place right. he used to be the Mexican restaurant? Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was a great. He was great. Sounded yeah. great. Performed yeah. great. And sounded great. It was so, so yeah. cool to see them. Now I saw them, but not on that tour. I had seen them with, I went down to uh, St. Vitus and I was with Ryan Scow. I don't remember who exactly else was with us, but it was in the summer, but uh, I think it might've been a couple of years prior to that, where we went and experienced the show at St. Vitus. And I do believe that my wife went to see Grim Reaper back in the day, too. And I don't know if that was the same night as Halloween on that tour or whether it was another tour. Uh, Did they do any one-offs? I know that they were scheduled to play Rock 3 in Middletown, when okay. it went out of, but it went out of business and closed before, they, before that gig happened. Pretty sure I got a hazy memory, especially right now as I explain what was going on. <laughs> But uh, my memory's not as only... good as Chris Allo's. I'm, I'm much older than he is. I was going to say, yeah, other than um, that, 80, that 87 gig we all went to. Rich, were you at that one too? The Mid Hudson No, I didn't see that one. But did okay. they tour when uh, uh, See You in Hell and Fear No Evil came out, or they didn't come until later? You know, I thought that was the first time, right? When it was? I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. I don't remember them coming around before. Someone yeah. will someone will add in the comments. I think it was. I, I think it was the first time for Halloween. I'm pretty I, sure. I, I know that was the first time I saw all three bands. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I don't I remember who was there. But... One Armored Saint. Yeah, that was it was a Grim Reaper, Halloween, and Armored Saint in Armored September Saint, yeah. of 1987. Yeah. In fact, MTV had filmed one of the. I have it on VHS somewhere. Yes. MTV yep. filmed like a, a special. Mm. and showed you know yep, that's how i saw it i remember watching that a chunk of uh all three bands you know sets from, from that that's three. on youtube i just saw it, uh, oh no kidding evening. yeah and uh, he's actually wearing a minnesota twins like jersey okay or a t-shirt or something steve is yeah because they must have filmed it in minnesota maybe i don't know but yeah i was yeah. gonna say after after that that run i i, yeah. I think it was not that long after that they wound up breaking up i don't remember Another mm. Grim Reaper gig for for many years. So it might have been the only time I because Linda remembered seeing them. Not, so it was probably the same show we probably all went to. Yeah, yeah. we were all there. Yeah, I'll I'll think remember because all the bands were walking around after they oh, yeah. played in the crowd. It was great. They I got to meet everybody that day. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, they were very. I don't think Halloween came back either, really, until the late nineties. I want to say right. Oh, no, Halloween did come back um in uh, the tour for, with for anthrax two? and exodus yes i was at that okay. one at the that civic was also center. at the mid hudson civic center i want to yeah. say that was 88 yeah. or 89 actually it wasn't celtic frost on that one no that was another mm. one no, there was, was a, there that was, was an mtv that was yeah. an mtv one also chris because i yeah. was lucky enough to get backstage passes which was a big deal for me as a young kid then and uh i remember kind of being miserable backstage because anthrax was in charge of things and they were doing nothing but playing hip-hop wow. they had like a dj and they were doing slip and slides and i remember like halloween standing over in the corner looking bored out of their minds and, <laughs> and i got and i got them to autograph a copy of keeper the seven keys or something which yeah. i still have in the store. Part two at that point that's probably yeah. where they were touring for part yeah 
I think it was a part two. And uh, I just remember like, wow, this is not what a backstage of metal, which in my mind should have been like then. But of course, uh, Anthrax had a lot of hip hop uh, yeah. influences at that time. And it was like, chip, 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 chip. <laughs> Beat, you would have loved it. I'm sure. No. <laughs> so, Steve Grimmett leaves us at age 62. I don't think they've announced yet what uh, yeah, what no. happened to him, but I, he's, I mean, he's, you know, he's had his issues in the past. And um, sad day. Very sad, yeah. Yeah. Pet yeah. home when you're 61 up here. Oof. <laughs> I'm Did the old guy. Your, your favorite songs from the, the couple albums, or you didn't do that yet? We haven't done that yet. Yeah, it's a good question. Oh, okay. Steve, why don't you start us off here? Well, I can tell you what. One of my favorite, I, I think Butch Jones even mentioned this. Uh, uh, he said he couldn't make it tonight. Uh, he would like, like to, but he, he, he likes that third album the best. And I can't disagree with him on that. I love the song Night of the Vampire, even though it has that cheesy line that goes, do what mama said, brush your teeth and go to bed. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> my wife was just singing that and laughing that. But I, I, I think that, was, I wasn't that it. wasn't that the lyric in Rock You to Hell? Yes, Rock oh, you I, to I, Hell. I, I, yep, yeah, you're right. Rock You to Hell. I tell you, I'm a little yeah. dull. So that's, that's Rock right. You to Hell. That's the first song from that album. I like Night of the Vampire better. I think that's one of the best ones. I, yeah. of course, Dead on Arrival from the first album. Dead on Arrival is great. Yeah. Uh, Lust for Freedom. I mean, they, they suck it and see is a pretty cheesy one too. But that's not one of my favorites. That's my one of my disappointed. But people that's love that. Sound. One. Was true on that one. Yeah, but I was gonna say lots of bands had blowjob songs at the time. So yeah. you know, White Snake and Judas Priest. So rock Grimmett you to Priest. hell and brush your teeth and go to bed. Yeah. All right. How about uh, But uh, I mean, the title track is. I was great. gonna say, other than the title track, uh, other than yeah, that, really I, title track in this one. It's a, little, it's a little blurry, but yeah, I always like Lust for Freedom. I was just going to say that, Chris. They had that, they had that awful uh, Women in Prison movie, Lust for Freedom. <laughs> oh, okay. Is, it's not terrible. I mean, it, it's not, you know, um, you know, the big birdcage or the big dollhouse, but it, it's fun. Um, but yeah, you know, and, uh, Grim Reaper did the uh, the song for that. How about The Show Must Go On? That's, yeah, a, that's, really a, cool. that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's a good yep. one also. The first album. It was like all, all Hell Let Loose. I always thought that was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had some. They had some great material. And yeah. uh, it's just a shame, you know. Yep. And my only prop that I dug out was my Grim Reaper blacklight poster, nice. which I've had for years. And we used it for the oh, episode awesome. when I had them on. So uh, yeah, you got one of those. You have one too, don't you, Rich? No, I didn't get. I don't have one of those. I have um, Iron oh, okay. Maiden Killers. I got Iron Maiden Killers, a Kiss one, mm-hmm. one or two others, but I don't have the Grim Reaper. That's on my to get list for the longest time i still had those and sold those for a long time like new old stock i think about five years ago that that finally ran out there was that and i had a venom black lights too and uh i chatted with tony you know demolition man from venom inc today and he really would have liked to join us tonight but they were on tour and uh doing something going from a festival he said it's festival season and he also said he wasn't sure if he was up to doing it because he was pretty broke up and uh you know, just a sad time, but yeah, hopefully he's in a better place and uh, everybody's it. like, see you in hell now. Maybe he didn't really want to go to hell in the end as he got older, <laughs> no, but <laughs> who knows what happened. You know? Yeah. Hopefully he's in a good spot wherever he went. Yeah, that's right. So there you have it, everybody. A quick little tribute to uh, Steve Grimmitz, who uh, passed away today at the age of 62. Of course, the great singer from Grim Reaper. So uh, let us know your thoughts on Steve and the music of Grim Reaper down in the comments below. Uh, He'll be much missed. And uh, thanks for watching everybody. This uh, special tribute episode of Hudson Valley Squares. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together. All the damn time for Rich Catino, Steve Keeler and Chris Allo, I am Pete Pardo. Rest in peace, Steve. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.